Returning to Source, Class 9, Spiritual Awakening and the Journey Home. Hello, I'm Jim Morningstar, your guide through this nine-class journey of returning to Source. The ninth in our series is entitled Spiritual Awakening and the Journey Home. We will be informing our journey beyond this series with the time-honored stages of enlightenment from the Zen tradition. The Buddhist teaching of Zen ox herding. Returning to source is not a concept new to our course. Indeed, it's our contemporary version of a journey undertaken by humans from time immemorial. It will help us put our personal journey in context by showing the parallels to one of the venerable traditions of our world cultures, which has preserved its version of this journey in written and oral forms. Taming the Ox is a succinct Buddhist guide to common stages humans traverse on the path to union with Source or enlightenment. It surveys ten stages of enlightenment as it unfolds in a human life. In this teaching, the Ox is a symbol for enlightenment, the goal of Buddhist studies. It's believed that the Ox symbol was chosen due to East Indians' reverence for cows, which are considered sacred. The framework for this account is from the blog Buddha Groove. What is enlightenment? Instead of being an experience, enlightenment transcends all experiences, all duality. Enlightenment is the full embodied and abiding realization that while the forms of this world are ever-changing, something lasting and infinite persists, uniting everything. Separation is seen as an illusion. All forms have this Buddha nature, arising and returning to it, never apart from it. The enlightened person is perpetually in touch with this eternal source. The journey towards enlightenment begins by seeing the world as mundane and made up of separate forms. It culminates with the realization that nothing is mundane or separate. All is unified oneness. It is said that each of the ten phases of Zen ox herding can take years or lifetimes, but in rare cases, minutes, hours, or days. Stage 1. Seeking the ox. All people are already seeking the ox, that is, searching for fulfillment and happiness in their work, relationships, and other worldly pursuits. This is the inalienable right to the pursuit of happiness, as stated in the U.S. Constitution. It is this inner drive which leads us up the pyramid of happiness to find meaning and purpose in our lives. It's the impetus which leads us home. Now, take Class 9, Handout 1, Section 1, and make a brief note of how you pursued happiness before you put it in a spiritual or purposeful context. Then come back to the video. Finding the Tracks In this phase, Phase 2, the insight dawns that all worldly forms come and go leaving just fleeting satisfaction. Something more lasting is sought. When we've satiated ourselves relentlessly on the first level of the pyramid of happiness with sensual pleasures, or even when we have devoted ourselves to employing our signature strengths to get satisfaction, we realize that all forms which deliver this happiness come and go, leaving an empty feeling. Now take Class 9, Handout 1, Section 2, and make a brief note of when you became aware of the futile nature of continuous pleasure-seeking, and that you were interested in something beyond this. Then come back to the video. Stage 3, First Glimpse of the Ox. Now this refers to the person's first spiritual experience, or satori flash of insight. It can take the form of an epiphany, oneness awareness, while out in nature, 
a near-death experience, or kundalini during meditation. The glimpse makes an impact and inspires us to continue on the journey. This whets our appetite to seek the conditions which more likely increase the chances of increasing these happenings, such as reading books, going to classes, doing retreats, workshops, or the company of like-spirited others. Now, take Class 9, Handout 1, Section 3, and make a brief note of one of your first awakenings to what is beyond consensus reality. Then, come back to the video. Stage 4, Catching the Ox. At this stage, changes in focus and life structure are inevitable. One begins to lose attachment to material things, and they may change their job, relationships, or other circumstances to make their spiritual journey a priority. Again, take Class 9, Handout 1, Section 4, and make a brief note of what you did to put your life on a more conscious spiritual path. And come back to the video. Stage 5, Taming the Ox. The seeker becomes aware there is a watcher dimension within them that is independent of thoughts, perceptions, and emotions. It is the space from which all I thoughts arise. Take Class 9, Handout 1, Section 5, and make a brief note of when you became aware of the watcher that is beyond your monkey mind or the default mode network in your brain. Then come back to the video. Stage 6, Riding the Ox Home. This watcher dimension grows stronger as the advancing practitioner is no longer ruled by the mind, thoughts, ego, and who they thought they were. We may have thoughts and emotions, but we become less and less prone to being swept away by the monkey mind or identifying with it. Take Class 9, Handout 1, Section 6, and make a brief note of what you did in your life to strengthen the watcher or benevolent observer dimension in yourself, you know, such as doing mindfulness practice. Then come back to the video. Stage 7, Ox Forgotten, Self Alone. We realize that we are not apart from our watcher dimension, true nature or oneness. The seeker the seeking and the sought are all of the same energy field and therefore one and the same. However, we may still experience ourselves at times as a separate being. Take Class 9, Handout 1, Section 7 and make a brief note of any experience you've had of being the energy field beyond your body or ego, even if this was very fleeting or fragmentary and come back to the video. Stage 8, both ox and self forgotten. Separateness and duality evaporate as we see ourselves in all things a part of the all that is, the oneness. It is a visceral experience, not just an idea or a concept. Take Class 9, Handout 1, Section 8, and make a brief note of any experience you have had a being one with everything, even if this was very fleeting or fragmentary. And come back to the video. Stage 9, Return to the Source. While oneness is seen as the source of all that is, forms were thought to emerge and return from oneness instead of being continuously synonymous with it. In this phase, the linear time illusion construct dissolves past, present, and future, and all forms are appreciated as the timeless now of oneness. Take Class 9, Handout 1, Section 9, and make a brief note of any experience you have had of being in the timeless now, even if this was very fleeting or fragmentary. Then come back to the video. Stage 10, Entering the Marketplace 
with helping hands. The enlightened person is now the embodiment of awakened consciousness and returns to the, quotes, mundane life, knowing that nothing is mundane. All is oneness at all points in time and space. Bliss, gratitude, and unconditional love prevail. Take Class 9, Handout 1, Section 10, Make a brief note of any experience you've had of being no thing while bliss, gratitude, and unconditional love prevail. Even if this was very fleeting or fragmentary, then come back to the video. The Buddhist teaching of enlightenment overlaps with Christianity in that both emphasize being in the world but not of the world. After enlightenment, the forms of the world are appreciated with no attachment or aversion. Love and deep compassion reign. And while samsara, reincarnation, ends, many choose to help others become enlightened, the bodhisattva path. Now, finally, take Class 9, Handout 1, Section 11, and make a brief note of how you have been dedicated in your life in supporting others in their returning to source or enlightenment, even if you haven't fully realized how you've been doing this until just now. Then come back to the video. The in perspective is that we are all already enlightened and can be nothing but enlightened and one with the source. The yang perspective is that we have forgotten our heritage and must take steps to return to the awareness of our oneness with Source and behaving and creating our lives accordingly. The whole person is a healthy balance of yin and yang. We meditate or contemplate and experience our oneness, and we set goals to work and bring our lives into alignment with truth, simplicity, and love. Holding you in my heart as fellow travelers on the road home, I send and receive blessings for our circle and all sentient beings as we co-create the reality of love as all there is and earth as heaven is. Blessings in life and love.